what I've already set up for you are all the boxes, all the rectangles that are needed. I'm going to explain it to you just a little bit more in depth. I have my isometric, and I notice that it is 9 units in width. I also know that it's 8 units in height and 6 units in depth. So when I look at the bottom right corner of my entire drawing here, not up against the grid paper, but here, I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units in height and then another two to get me up to eight. That six is gonna be very important for where I wanna see this triangular face start. So this entire angled edge that makes up, or angled face that makes up that angled edge in the front view, I need to see where it starts. So that's what this line will represent at six units up. Then another two more to get to the top of the entire object. And you can almost start to see now how I'll have this big rectangle that's drawn in right here that I delineate. And that's because I went over two units as well. One, two. So that rectangle is here. This little square is only there as a construction line because this particular edge will only start right here. And it will end over here. So this space, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, will be how I represent this angled face. Because it's angled, it has both width and height, but in this case, since it goes back in depth, it also has a third component of depth. I don't see depth in the front view, so I will only see its height and its width. Therefore, I get what's called a foreshortened view a view that is not true size or shape, but does represent at least two of the dimensions, height and width. I'll see the same angled face over here in my right side view. So this smaller rectangle, to which I will only see its depth and its height, you can almost think of that rectangle as being right here, but then projected out to the right side view. So again, you could think of it as being a rectangle that I see in the right side, just here. And that's this rectangle. I see its height, starting at the front edge, and its depth. This rectangle, which represents this surface face on the right side, is seen here. Eight units high, two units deep and I can project that edge from the top if need be to where I also see this L shape and will wind up seeing this triangle. At this point right now all I know is that the triangle starts and stops in these two locations. I haven't drawn that line in yet. <coughs> so now I start delineating once I have this all set up. Again, I already have my front, my top, my right side. I've also drawn in the angled line needed in case I had some information, much like this edge, that needs to go over and down. So now what I have are all of the lines delineated needed to represent the faces. I see this shape here. I see this shape. That's this angled face. I see this L shape. That would be here. I see this shape, that's the angled face from the right side, this shape which is here, and this shape which is here. I also see in the top view the triangle and this L shape.